Sawadee Cup. Welcome to another edition of Connections for Thai Move Talk. I am your host, Brian Berletic. It is very important to keep an eye on what the United States is doing in Asia and in Southeast Asia in particular. The US, just like European powers before it, has attempted for decades to assert control over the region to prevent the rise of not only China as a global superpower, but prevent the rise of Asia as an independent and economically influential regional superpower. It is important to understand that this agenda continues to this day and is reflected in commentary all across the Western media. This is an article by Foreign Policy titled Time for America to Play Offense in China's Backyard. And it says here, ignoring Cambodia and Laos is a strategic mistake, but engagement requires a smarter balance of values and interests. But the U.S. is not ignoring Cambodia and Laos. The U.S. simply cannot bully, coerce, or interfere in either of these countries like it used to. And for the people actually living in both countries and people all across the entire region, this is actually a very good thing. Uh, only for Washington and media that helps promote its agenda is this somehow a bad thing. Let's read some more. If the United States were to make inroads in Cambodia and Laos, which observers have likened to vassals, satellite states, or virtual colonies of China. Wait a minute. Uh, this is Foreign Policy magazine pretending that the US itself doesn't actually have military forces occupying nations around the globe right now. And that the US itself didn't militarily occupy and wage war on Southeast Asia, including both Cambodia and Laos for decades. China, by simply doing business with both countries and both countries preferring to do business with China, rather than the country that attempted to bomb them both into the Stone Age, is somehow China making them their colonies. Let's read a little bit more. It says these uh, inroads the US is trying to make. It would take strategic competition into China's own backyard. Perhaps more significantly, it would help undermine the persistent narrative that the United States is only reacting and playing the fence in the Indo-Pacific in the face of China's all but inevitable rise. And there you have it. That is the bottom line. The US wants to prevent the rise of China and maintain primacy over the region, over all of Asia, including Southeast Asia. And that right there is an admission to the very sort of imperialist ambitions Foreign Policy magazine just accused China of. Now, let's look at how the US seeks to make these inroads. It says here, stepping up US engagement with Cambodia and Laos, for example, by countering China's multiple Belt and Road Initiative projects or enhancing US access to Cambodia's Rem naval base, could also reverse what already seems like a fait accompli that China will dominate even subjugate the Southeast Asian mainland. First of all, why would the US want to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative? This is China building desperately needed infrastructure for the region. Infrastructure the US refused to build for the decades and decades following World War II that the US held primacy over the region during. Why wouldn't the US want to cooperate with the Belt and Road Initiative? Why wouldn't the US want to add to it? Instead, it wants to counter it. And we know what that entails, and I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Uh, but let's look at some recent headlines. Here from the Bangkok Post, focus on Lao-China rail amid fruit export hopes. This is Lao's first ever railway built not by the US, but by China. And it's only been in operation since December, and it is already having a major and very positive impact on Laos' economy, uh, bringing in tourists, despite COVID still being an issue, and allowing Laos to finally export more products to China and beyond. And it's so great that it has gained attention in Thailand, uh, Thailand, who is supposed to be building a high-speed railway with China that will connect to this one in Laos. Uh, the article says, Thailand looks set to negotiate with the Laos and Chinese governments for closer logistic and freight transport cooperation through the Laos-China high-speed rail project in the hope that it'll boost fresh fruit exports. 
But I told you that the U.S. wants to counter China's Belt and Road Initiative, and they obviously can't build railways for this region. They can't even build railways back home in America. So what are they going to do to counter this? This is also from the Bangkok Post. High speed rail blues. Down here it says, Opposition MPs submitted a motion to question the government last week following a report that 33 containers with 20 tons each of fresh vegetables from China were sent to Thailand in the first week of December. They're complaining about Thailand being at a disadvantage because of the new railway. But as the Bangkok Post points out, the China-Lao Railway is a great opportunity for all three nations, China, Lao, and Thailand. Thailand can likewise reap the opportunity to export fresh produce, particularly fruit to China via the rail route. But that's not if the US-backed opposition in Thailand continues not only sabotaging ties between Thailand and China in general, but more specifically continues targeting Thailand's leg of this regional high-speed rail network. This article is originally from Bloomberg. Thailand needs Hyperloop, not China-built high-speed rail. Tanatong. Tanatong Zhuang Rung Ruangget is one of the, these US-backed opposition leaders, and he's been openly trying to block this high-speed railway, even as others among the opposition begin complaining about all the benefits it's giving Laos and China, and so far, not Thailand. This is how the US is planning to counter not just China's Belt and Road Initiative, but counter all the benefits everyone in Asia will get from it. Let's get back to the original Foreign Policy Magazine article and read a little bit more. Down here it says, a purely values-based approach has clearly failed to make headway, isolates the United States in the region and unnecessarily cedes ground to Beijing. And what they're talking about here is these so-called values the U.S. is always pushing. Democracy, human rights, freedom. These values the U.S. itself tramples all around the globe and does so in ways many times worse than it even baselessly accuses others of doing. And why does the U.S. push values instead of just offering the region opportunities like China is doing? Because unlike China, the U.S. goal is primacy. Not win-win prosperity, not partnership, not real genuine development, but just primacy. And because they have nothing in reality to offer, they hide this actual agenda behind these values they're always pushing. It is a smokescreen. And it is a smokescreen the winds of change brought about by China have begun blowing away. Foreign Policy's article talks about how Cambodia and Laos are not democracies. And what Foreign Policy magazine and also the US State Department means by democracy is both countries having a ruling government selected by and working for Washington. Luckily, the U.S. has really made no progress in any way of building up significant opposition inside Laos. But in Cambodia, it had. This Cambodia National Rescue Party, it is run out of Washington, D.C., Virginia, London, Paris. Its one leader, Sam Rainsy, has dual French-Cambodian citizenship, France being Cambodia's former colonial ruler. Another leader is Kem Soka, who was literally caught on video admitting the U.S. ran the entire opposition and was assisting him in overthrowing the current Cambodian government, the same way the U.S. overthrew the government of Serbia in 2000. So let's get back to this foreign policy article here. It says, the Biden administration could work in concert with democratic partners such as Australia, India, Japan, and South Korea to jointly forge ahead with infrastructure and investment projects in Cambodia and Laos that directly compete against China's Belt and Road Initiative. The basis for these projects is in place, including Biden's Build Back Better World Initiative and existing trade and investment framework agreements with Phnom Penh and Vientiane that could be built on. But we know the US and its allies in no conceivable way can compete with China in terms of building infrastructure. And what's most important of all to understand is the US does not want to build infrastructure for these nations, even if it could, because it would empower them. It would further tilt the global balance of power in favor of multipolarism versus U.S. global hegemony. And that is simply something the U.S. is not interested in. 
And then finally, Foreign Policy magazine ends its article by saying, Hun Sen has cracked down on opposition groups. Last week, he visited Myanmar to meet with the military junta shunned by most other countries. But in the end, upping engagement with Cambodia and Laos can only be a net positive for the United States as it competes against China. A purely values-based approach has clearly failed to make headway, isolates the United States in a region where few countries are true democracies, and unnecessarily cedes ground to Beijing. And that's it, isn't it? The only reason the US wants to look like it's trying to engage these countries is to compete against China. Not because it's interested in doing business or helping the region thrive. The US has nothing of substance to offer and anything it does will simply be another smokescreen as it seeks to divide and destroy not only Cambodia and Laos, but the entire region and simply to spite China, whom the US refuses to cede ground to in a region of the planet the US is not even located in. Yes, the U.S. is a huge export market, and nations in the region want to do business with the U.S., but they do not want to be told what to do. They don't want to be told who they can and cannot do business with, and they do not want the U.S. choosing their type of government, nor choosing the people in power running that government. The U.S. held primacy over Asia for decades, and what did it do? Does anyone really believe that now they are genuinely interested in constructive relations with the region? Or doesn't the Western media and the US government itself on a daily basis affirm that all the US is interested in is containing China at the expense of everyone else except themselves? A leopard does not change its spots. An empire does not become enlightened overnight. Please keep this all in mind when trying to assess the latest attempts by Washington to work its way back into Asia and Southeast Asia in particular. That does it for this week's edition of Connections for Thai Move Talk. Until next week, sawadee kap.